I'm going to begin this video by unconditionally condemning what happened at Red Fort yesterday. What the violence that we saw, the way the police were attacked, they were thrown off the parapet. We saw all that happen and it's out there on camera. I want to condemn that for two reasons. First, because there is no place for this kind of violence in democratic politics. And no amount of water bartery can make it right. That is the first point. Secondly, uh, this essentially weakens the farmers' movement. Essentially becomes a great way to make them look bad. And we saw what happened. We saw what the television media did. We saw what newspapers have done today. Except barring a few, Indian Express is a case in point where you'll find a lot of good reportage. But the language that we see uh, in electronic media, which is television, what uh, some of us like to call Godi media, which is the compliant media, and also some of the big newspapers has essentially been to vilify these farmers, make them look like villains and make them look like uh, aggressive uh, people who are dangerous and need to be uh, dealt with with a strong arm of the state. Now, all of this makes it very crucial that farmers unions, the key farmers unions, distance themselves from this violence and make sure that this is not repeated. And we've seen that it has already happened. Uh, we know that the biggest umbrella body of farmers has already said that they do not, uh, they were not part of what happened at Redford. They condemned what happened at Redford and they're going to look into why this happened and who led it. But this is not a black and white story. This is important to understand. This is not a black and white story. And this video is going to be about those shades of grey. Stay tuned. So let's uh, look at the context here, right? Because think of it. If you've been sitting in Delhi, you've been under your blanket for the past two months. You've got heaters on in your house. You know how biting cold it is. It, the cold wave has been absolutely crazy this time. And in this freezing cold, farmers, thousands and thousands of them, have been sitting at our borders. The three borders, entry points into Delhi, where they've been camping, protesting, asking for these farm bills to be repealed, to be withdrawn. And what have they uh, been met with? They've essentially been met with silence. They've been rendered invisible by the national media. And the government too has only offered them some, a few platitudes and no real uh, answer with which they can go home and say, okay, we feel safe now that our, our entire livelihood is not going to be taken over by some private company later on. Now, uh, the point here is that 60 days of protests where no one listens to you, when you're seen as, as if you do not exist, uh, this is a powder keg. When such things happen in a democracy, what happens? It is very easy for the more volatile elements to start looking for more extreme forms of protests. And as we know, this is precisely what happened, as you can read in the Indian Express today, uh, on the 25th evening. Because the, the uh, stage from which the farmers are addressed at the single border, that was taken over on the evening of the 25th by the more extreme groups. And this is there in a report uh, by Kamal Deep Singh Brar in um, filed from Amritsar. This is on the, the Indian Express website. You can see, go and see it. That from about, uh, and I'm going to read it out, that for about six hours from 6 p.m. to midnight, a group of youths hijacked the stage to oppose the route agreed upon between the main farmers union and Delhi police. And their protest was webcast live on some Punjabi web channels as well as some individual social media accounts. And this involved uh, uh, two known faces. One was uh, Lakhvir Singh Sidhana, alias Lakha Sidhana. And uh, there was also the Punjabi film actor Deep Sidhu, who you've been seeing on social media with his photographs along with uh, Sunny Deol, some with uh, Prime Minister Modi and with Home Minister Amit Shah. In the past, he's known to have campaigned for Sunny Deol, although Sunny Deol 
over the past two months has distanced himself from him and has said that we have nothing to do with this uh, person. He has been an apologist for, amongst other things, uh, Brindan Wale and the Khalistan movement. He has been um, kind of bringing that repeatedly uh, in uh, every time he's spoken during this um, uh, farmers' protest. Now, um, the interesting thing is that these two people and their groups called upon younger farmers to take the ring road, to violate the agreed route that was, uh, the route that had been agreed upon by the farmers' main key leaders and the Delhi police. Um, perhaps this is, this is bound to happen in a certain sense, because as I said that once you leave people invisible, once you make them invisible, don't listen to them and you say that, okay, I was interested when they were protesting for the five, six days and now it's the same old stuff. I, I really don't care. They're going to do something which will make you care. Now, what they did didn't make you care. It made you feel they need to be crushed, right? That's the feeling you've had. Uh, the point again is very clear that when the farmers' unions had been talking to the government, each time if any reporter spoke to them or any journalist spoke to them, any analyst spoke to these farm union leaders, then broadly they told you off camera that, look, we cannot accept any compromise because the farmers are angry. If we go back with any compromise other than repealing these laws, then we, we simply won't be accepted. So in a sense, when they made this deal with the Delhi police, they had made a certain compromise because initially they had talked about joining the Republic Day Parade. Some of the big leaders had said, if uh, the country is about Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan, what is the problem if Kisan join soldiers, as we know, that the army and the defense forces are part of the Republic Day Parade? And uh, this uh, leader had said, what's the problem if soldiers, uh, Kisan join? They say farmers join this. Now, obviously, uh, this was going to be a problem. Obviously, if tractors had been rolling down Rajpath, it would have been a problem, unplanned, and it would have been a security issue. So this was not going to happen. But many farmers, as again, you can see from more reports on the Indian Express website, many farmers were not clearly aware of the plan. Many farmers did not know that they were not supposed or meant to go to uh, Red Fort and uh, some reports suggest that the fact that the internet was switched off in some places in anticipation of trouble, internet was switch switched off in parts of Delhi yesterday, uh, made it uh, even more difficult for farmers leaders to communicate what the route was or to stop people from breaking through because there was no control possible if the internet was no longer working. We know internet is now virtually a lifeline for everyone. Uh, so, here's the point to look at. They were ignored. They were, there are always uh, more agitated people in any group. The question is, how do you keep them within the moderate space? It is clear that that was not possible for at least in Red Fort. Again, you can go to uh, scroll.in, the website scroll.in, and there's an excellent uh, timeline here which has been created by reporters and uh, it's a combination of many reports from across the spectrum and this has been reported by Vijayata Lalwani and Supriya Sharma on scroll where they've given you a blow by blow account of how this rally unfolded and their point is and you can see how they've done it that most of this tractor rally most of it was actually peaceful it had a festive air about it, flowers were being showered. Even when in parts of, uh, in one part of Delhi where the police lati charged them and uh, used tear gas shells, even then it was peaceful. Reports started coming in that in some parts the route was being breached. Again, if you go to another story on Indian Express, we hear that the planning was not as good as the farmers' leaders thought. And many people, many farmers thought that they will go to Red Fort, take a round and come back. And again, I would like you to go to quint, uh, uh, thequint.com and there's an excellent piece here, excellent eyewitness piece, which is worth reading by Nishtha Gautam. 
and where she says how it was her day off, it was a holiday and she just could hear farmers rolling down the ring road. I think that's what she says right at the beginning. And she went there and she wanted to see what's happening. And uh, she said that she could hear the tractor rally. And the interesting thing is that she writes that I witnessed an unending procession of tractors, cars, SUVs and bi bikes, not to mention cycles and walking protesters. For an hour or so, the sloganeering, the songs and vehicular noise drowns any other experience on the road. What is remarkable about the processions is that there is absolutely no problem on the roads. The traffic is largely streamlined. I see organizers make way for an ambulance. So again, this has not been reported to you on mainstream media. All you saw is those a &I pictures of policemen jumping off that parapet into a dry well. Many of them were injured there. We see uh, it is worth going through Nisha Gautam's blow-by-blow -blow account because she talks about how farmers had a sense that they have to go to Red Fort to show that they exist. To make the people of Delhi, the government of Delhi, see them and realize that they are there, they're human beings and they have their own reasons for this protest. They're not just sitting there out, out there in the cold for fun. They wanted to be seen. But they had not planned to go into Red Fort and take it over. Many, as Nishagotham says, took their tractors, went around Red Fort, took a U-turn, went back. They had registered that they had come and they went back. There is an interesting part in Nishtha Gautam's report, which we see in other reports also, is the, uh, the great contradiction that we see between older farmers who want to be moderate, who want to, and the farmer leaders who are trying to keep it within control, and some younger uh, farmers. Now, the younger farmers, in some cases, wanted to be, make a much louder splash. And here is an interesting part where... Um, um, where Nishtha Gautam writes that there's a, he, she talks about a clash between an older farmer and a younger farmer here. Uh, because uh, uh, here a young man is being lambasted by another, she writes. And this is inside the Red Fort. She's also go on, gone there in with them. And it appears that more youngsters want to climb up the walls of Red Fort to reach the flagstaff. Elderly protesters are telling hot-headed youth that it isn't right. And this is what an elderly gentleman says. Ye hamara national jhanda hai, isko chuna bhi nahi chahiye. Hamara kaam ho gaya, bas yaha aakar. So, what is the overall, even those who have broken the planned route, who have breached that plan and have gone to Red Fort, even they believed that they just have to go, make their presence fe felt and go back. Nothing to be done there. And this is where one youngster says, Hum khun chadarne aaye hain, which means we are here to make a blood offering. And an elderly gent shouted, Bahar jaake chada khun. Offer your blood outside. And let out some chaste Punjabi expletives. expletives. Um, now again, Nishtha Gautam's, um, what she sees, appears to her that there was some kind of a report or a rumor of a lati charge whether that happened or not is she's not reported no one knows there was people some young uh, people farmers ran out of red fort and they said that there's a police lati charge going on inside and when that happened people started running in and then it, we know what happened we saw that those pictures of the um, uh, of that group of farmers going and hitting and attacking the police force and pushing them off the parapet wall where a lot of policemen got injured. Nishtha Gautam writes about how she saw one policeman, injured policeman being carried away by uh, other policemen. And as she tried to take a uh, video or a photograph with her phone camera, one of the protesting farmers came to her and uh, threatened in Haryanvi don't bring us bad name by showing only this police constable. He probably means that there are other farmers who've got injured, so don't just show it. Now, this is another important point she makes. Other protesters whisk him away and apologize to me. Now, there's this, even there, as we know, we've seen it on Twitter. If you go to social media, you'll see a lot of videos of farmers trying to calm, farmers' unions try to calm down uh, the, the more agitated young people. 
who were part of this violence. And before that, those who put up the uh, flag up there, as we know, which was earlier called, wrongly called, a Khalistani flag, which is what is called the Nishan Sahib. Uh, now, uh, the, what repeatedly we have seen on social media and on news channels that this is a Khalistani flag and the Khalistanis have taken over and this was always a protest organized by these Khalistanis. Some of the well-known names uh, that we know, those who are pro uh, these farm laws have also talked about time to really hit back and uh, stamp this protest out. Some have talked about how our money, our tax money uh, is goes to feed these PA farmers and they use it and they're destroying uh, public property which has been paid for with our tax money. Now, this is a, this is a godsend. As I said, this is a perfect um, event which has been created even if it is a fringe that did it. It has been created for television cameras to be played out over the next few days endlessly for you to watch and say, these farmers are so violent and they did this and they can do anything. And there is a fear of this, this unruly mob, this great unwashed unruly mob. There's a fear in the middle class mind. There's a fear in the ruling classes that they can come and do anything. What if there's an insurrection? They need to be stopped. No one's telling you about the 90% of farmers who were peaceful. And I'm saying 90% actually as... I mean, very generous here to the uh, India's Godi media because I think it's most likely going to be 5% who were violent and 95% who were absolutely peaceful. 95% who felt that this violence was wrong because they were out there as well. I'm not going to go into the issue of Deep Singh Sidhu. The reason I'm not going to go into that is because, um, you know, just because he took photographs with Amit Shah and that and Narendra Modi and he campaigned for Sunny Deol does not necessarily mean that he's currently a supporter of the BJP and it definitely does not translate into any kind of fact that he is a plant or some kind of a, a Trojan horse in the movement because there is a sentiment there is an extremist sentiment out there which takes place in any such or uh, any such protest organization, any such large-scale protest that takes place, which sometimes does take the law into their hands. And always the groups that are in power use that. And I'll give you one example. You remember the protests after the Nirbhaya rape in Delhi. There was a policeman who uh, got hit on the head and later he died of a heart attack. And uh, it was used by many people who were pro-UPA, pro-Congress at that time, as look at these protests, they're out of hand, they've killed this cop. In fact, later as we know, it turned out that the protesters were trying to save the policeman and took him to the hospital. But as I'm saying that such events always are used by those in power to discredit a protest movement. It is important for us to therefore see these shades of grey. It is important for us to also understand that when we treat things as black and white and we also switch off, we make people invisible. When we make the underdog invisible, then we're essentially pushing them to uh, become extremists, to take extremist paths. And that is important, that we must continue to engage. And you might have at some point had a sympathy, a bit of sympathy with the farmers' movement. Cut them some slack. Don't give it up just because you saw those uh, pictures on television. Thank <laughs> you.